Oh, it's all about keeping our reputation intact. Do you know the different forms that fraud can take? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah! Actually, I don't. Talking about a beep, 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 honk, 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 beep, beep, honk, 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 vroom, vroom. You're giving me the blues. Tell me what do I do? That was Sizzle Reel from a new Learnings and Entertainments offering entitled Ethics and Compliance Jams. In this episode of Creativity and Compliance, Ronnie Feldman and myself discuss this new offering from L&E and why the idea of putting music to compliance policies and procedures and questions is the coolest idea that Ronnie's ever developed. I know you'll enjoy this episode of Creativity and Compliance. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back again with Ronnie Feldman for another episode of Creativity in Compliance. Uh, say hello to our audience, Ronnie. Hello, everybody. So, Ronnie, uh, we're exploring uh, over a couple of podcasts some great new product and service offerings from uh, Learnings and Entertainment. And today I wanted to take up a product offering entitled Ethics and Compliance Jams. Can you first tell us what they are and then what you hope to achieve with these? Well, thanks for the, the setup, and I hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll play a little teaser for you. Uh, uh, if you haven't just watched it, we'll play it at the end. Um, th this is a sort of a, pra a passion project uh, that I've had for a while. For anyone who's uh, followed our journey, even back to my days when we were building the Second City business to, to creating learnings and entertainments, is... Um, I, you know, I call the company Learnings and Entertainments because entertainment uh, is broader than just comedy and the best kind of entertainment teaches you things and the best kind of learning is entertaining. And I have this love of music. I think we all know that when we're um, growing up that you, you, you sing songs to learn things. I grew up with schoolhouse rock. Like I, you learn things through music, advertisements, use jingles. So a lot of our content has different aspects of music and um, I've been wanting to um, create more musical content that, that really gets a little deeper into the policies in the same way that, you know, you, you, you learn how a bill becomes a law. We certainly can learn about a, a policy. And I had seen, a sh uh, I, I sometimes borrow things from the late night talk shows. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, who I'm, I'm not even really a big fan of, honestly, but I had remembered he used to do a thing called Slow Jam the News. And slow jam the news was they would get a, a, a politician typically would get up there and read their stump speech in this dry manner. And then the roots and Jimmy Fallon would start playing music and then restating what the, what the politician would say with these kind of groovy, soulful jams. And I was like, this would be a good idea. So we put this idea out to the community and got some companies to help us. And we created this thing called Ethics Compliance Training Jams. <laughs> and they're essentially three-minute summaries of policies. Um, I can, I can kind of geek out on this theatrically. What they are is, an, uh, is essentially it's a two-person scene. It's a compliance officer and an employee. And the compliance officer is saying, hey, here's a little policy about you know, conflicts, privacy, corruption, antitrust, speaking up, ethical leadership, social media, et cetera, et cetera. So we have, a, we have this policy. You, you got to know this. The employee's like, why I got to know this? Well, you got to know it because it's important because this happens, this happens. Yeah, but can you do this? Nah, you can't really do that. Well, can I do this? Ah, you can't really do that. Well, you're making my job harder. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, but this is why you got to do it. Okay, I get it. 
that's essentially the scene. But instead of it being uh, 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 just a, a dry conversation, we hired a band. Uh, this guy I know back from my Second City days who's extremely talented, a musician, rapper, singer, director. And he and I wrote this together with our subject matter experts. And instead of having the employees saying these things, we sing them. <laughs> so essentially what it is, is a nice policy primer set to these soulful musical jams where they ask questions, get answers, say excuses, we debunk those excuses, and then they sing it at the end. And you end up with this really catchy, earwormy um, uh, summary of policies. It, I, I mean, it's quite frankly the coolest thing that I've ever made. I'm so excited about it. Um, but we, I love it that like, you know, we make things that are sometimes commercials that can be placed throughout the organization, but these are really like what I would call burst learning. They could be used instead of a, a, a scenario-based um, training. You could use it as a way to push and, and get awareness about a policy, or you could really just use it as a, a fun icebreaker as a way to introduce a, a live learning or an online learning. Um, uh, but anyway, um, you've sort of seen like a, a little bit of these things. Tell me what your thoughts and reactions are, Tom. So, Ronnie, it works for me on multiple levels. Um, one, it obviously is a compliance communication, part of the requirements of every compliance program. It's short, sweet, catchy, fun, and to the point. Uh, and hopefully, even if someone just listens for a moment, it will put an idea in their head that if they see an issue, they hear an issue, if they smell an issue, if they feel an issue, maybe even in their gut, they'll know how to deal with it, which is pick up the phone, raise your hand, go in your supervisor's office. Any of those reporting mechanisms that we always talk about. But I want to go back to something the Department of Justice put in front of us literally a year ago, now 13 months ago, when Lisa Monaco gave a speech where she said, the Department of Justice is going to measure your compliance culture or your culture of compliance. And that was formalized in the Monaco Doctrine and Monaco Memo, which was released in September of this year. But everything you can do, even in small building blocks, leads to demonstrating that you have a culture of compliance. And even if someone violated that culture of compliance, which led to a enforcement action, the company has done what it can to build that culture, to foster that culture, to communicate that culture, to remind people of that culture in an engaging way. And the engagement, uh, we've talked about training ad nauseum on no numerous other podcasts, um, uh, or rather episodes on this podcast, but the the DOJ now wants to look at not the quality or, or the questions you're asking in your training summary. They want to look at your engagement. How many people listened to this? Did they listen all the way through? Did they say, hey, you know, this is kind of cool. You got any more of these? Uh, even if it's to listen to the background music, you have created a communication piece that people are engaged with. And those are myriads of reasons to use a tool such as this and to, you know, why not rock out? Why not speak? I mean, uh, why not use the entertainment that's available to you, whether it's a video or an audio or something else? Well, so I always love your perspective on it, you know, and, and this particular episode is where, you know, we're talking about a thing that, I'm, that we made and, and it's because I'm proud of it and I think it has value. Um, but to me, it's part of it is like different pieces of content serve different purposes. So the confessions things that we made, uh, um, you know, are like commercials and those are interesting things to embed and circulate and promote, you know, the, the, the co compliance culture and a support system. These are, uh, you know, do that as well, but they're a little bit longer and meatier. I, so I always t uh, tell my clients, um, put the fun thing next to the important thing. So like these musical summaries of policies do have their own value and that they can be used to, to promote the, the issues, the main policy issues, several examples and some excuses. So you get that hit, but it also can be used to drive traffic to the 
important thing, which is maybe the specific details of your policies or the five things you want them to learn. So I love, you know, you know, pairing it as a way to get attention to a policy or embedding it in a training about that policy. And even, you know, you might have a more thoughtful PowerPoint or even a more thoughtful e-learning that has some more stuff around it. But as we've talked about before, they'll remember the emotional things, the, the interesting or fun things. I think these are really good icebreakers. It's a great way to like start a meeting because you're like, oh my God, we just had this, this soulful singer and rapper wrap all the reasons why people don't speak up. I mean, it's weird and it's interesting. <laughs> Um, and then you can follow that up well, now that, that minds and hearts are open with a little more thoughtful dialogue on it. Um, but in addition, we did try and cover enough excuses that you could use them to teach on. Um, so anyway, uh, that's uh, comply, uh, ethics compliance jams. We have 13 risk areas covered. I envision making more of these uh, in the coming year. And gosh, I hope you all... Uh, you know, we'll at least be curious enough to check them out and see if it makes makes sense for you. Uh, it makes me think of an idea that you, you brought up that maybe we'll do a podcast on this. There's sometimes benefit in just being interesting and weird. And I feel like we, uh, that these have some educational value to it, but they're just interesting and weird. <laughs> so there's one thing I do want to explore just for a few moments, Ronnie. Okay. And that's your reference to Schoolhouse Rock. Now, um, I was in college when Schoolhouse Rock came out, so other than perhaps in certain heightened states, I didn't watch a lot of Schoolhouse Rock. But I can still tell you Conjunction Station. And Schoolhouse Rock was powerful because it created memorable songs, videos, and tropes that taught kids school topics. And so when you said that was one of your you know, inspirations as a kid, I mean, you went back to the future to draw on something that was from the 80s at least, maybe even the late 70s, to use today. And it shows the power of what Schoolhouse Rock had and how you're able to use that as inspiration for your um, ethics and compliance jam. So I just wanted to maybe get your thoughts on why you think Schoolhouse Rock worked and why it still resonates and how you're able to use that as an inspiration for the creation of a new product in 2022. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I feel like it, in some ways it's it's self-evident. Like for people that reference is dated for them, you know, we all remember uh, the funny commercials and song. You know, we remember a song hook that gets stuck in our head, like music. You, you can geek out on the behavioral science behind it. You know, like you have the left part of your brain and the right part of your brain, and one of them is analytical, and you got to read stuff, and some of it is is like, I remember that little tune that I can't get rid of. Um, and I think the best learning and kind of blends those two things, which is kind of what we're trying to do here. We have kind of like a speaky person who's the straight, the, the, the straight person, so to speak. And then you have the musical part to get the musical hook. Uh, to me, you know, we, we all know, for people who raise kids know that teachers sing songs in schools. So, you know, we use mnemonic devices. We, um, we've talked before, like the airline safety video, there was Virgin America made a whole music video about the safety videos, you know, safety uh, procedures. Um, I mean, I still remember the saw, you know, like pieces of music that hit me at different stages of my life. And it takes me back to those places. My hope is that we use these same techniques to elicit that emotional positive feeling of uh, which are typically associated with negative, boring, finger wagging stuff. So we're trying to get rid of those thoughts and go, oh, these are the guys who gave me this fun, interesting thing. And hey, I learned something. And now I'm uh, more comfortable talking to them about the issues. Um, so uh, I think all of us kind of intuitively know that this is a better solution. What we have to do a better job of is explaining this to our leadership so they we stop doing the boring, terrible things that make people not think well of us. And then they won't ask for your help and support. Ronnie, unfortunately, near, we're near the end of our time for this episode, but uh, I wanted to thank you again. We're, of course, going to link to these uh, new uh, products in the show notes, and hopefully people enjoyed the sizzle reel that started this podcast off. So, uh, Ronnie, I look forward to continuing this conversation next time. Thanks, everybody. Have fun. Be creative. 
I hope you will check out the Learnings and Entertainments offering of Ethics and Compliance Jams. You can find it on the Learnings and Entertainment website. I hope you will join Ronnie and I again for another episode of Creativity and Compliance. Creativity and Compliance is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.